Right then, we're, we're back again. And what I have here is uh, set up for, okay, we'll say naturally aspirated diesels, uh, turbo diesels, two and a quarter even, and the uh, TDI engines, some rotary pump, which is there. Okay, so let's start off. What we have is a fuel tank up here, a reservoir to keep your fuel in. Yeah, you have a pipe, you see just the level there, you have a pipe which you can suck the diesel out of. You also have a tank cap, and this is really important because people sometimes forget this. The tank cap is actually vented, yeah? So what you'll have, you'll have a valve in here. When the diesel sucked out, it then compensates and uh, lets the pressure, so it doesn't collapse in on itself or stop the diesel from flowing, okay? So, vented. You'll find that sometimes, just very, very occasionally, you'll find that an engine that won't run because the fuel tank's actually uh, it's got vacuum in it and it stops the fuel going anywhere, right? This is something to remember. You also have uh, a siphoning tube up here, so when you fill up, um, it'll overspill and basically it won't come gushing out of the tank, all right? So, from there, we have a lift pump, we have a filter, we have an injection pump, we have um, an injector, well, we'll have four of them, but we'll just put one on the board here for now. And you have a sedimenter, okay? Sedimenters, um, they're as important now as they've ever, ever been. But a lot of people tend to, uh, to take them uh, off and don't use them, unless you're going into a place which has got filthy fuel, and that might be water contaminated because that separates water. So what we're gonna do, we'll build the fuel system first. I'm gonna start with dirty, the dirty side first because we have a dirty and a clean side for uh, diesel fuel, okay? So we'll say this is our stack pipe. You see that stack pipe? Okay, that's suck. What we wanna do is take a pipe from there and then we'll put it into our sedimenter, okay? The fuel fills up, because usually it's a glass bowl, so it'll fill right up, and the water should stay at the bottom, okay? If there's any water or dirt, it will fall down here. You usually have a separator at the bottom, which will stop the crap going back up. What people don't do, and they should do, is pay attention to this, because you're supposed to drain the water off regularly, okay, through here, undo it, drain the water off, do it back up again, right? So once we've gone through this, we're being sucked by the lift pump, okay? So we'll go to the inlet of the lift pump. Now I'll warn you, with older diesels, some don't have a lift pump, they have a transfer pump in the injection, in the injection pump, and they rely on incomplete vacuum in this system, so if there's any leaks, you get problems at the other end. This one, pulls diesel with a lift pump. So even if you have a slight leak, you, you'll get away with it for a certain amount of time. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Right, so the lift pump has a valve. When it sucks in, opens the valve. When it pushes, it closes that valve and opens the outlet, okay? And that will go to the diesel filter, yeah? Diesel fil uh, fills up, oh actually no, it fills up, fills up, fills up, and then it comes out, okay? Um, Filters are vitally important, and what I'll say now is that you've you've had your dirty side. You now we're now on to clean, okay? Right. So we've got clean, which goes to the diesel um, injection pump, okay? Now the TDI pumps they are self bleeding. They're great because you can have as long as your filter's full. Um, you can then suck all the way through or crank it over and it'll push the air out and bleed it out, okay? Earlier ones, <coughs> they had bleeds on the pump to let the air out if needs be. If you ever run out of diesel at one time, they'd say you've got trouble starting. Of course you will, because you've got to fill that pump all the way up with diesel uh, before it'll start pressurizing. Okay, so this is the inlet. Um, the injection pump does its magic. I'm, I'm not going to go into this at the moment because um, that is uh, uh, quite lengthy in itself. 
But what we'll say is that what it does, it pressurizes the diesel. I think it's 280 atmospheres or something like that. Something like that, okay. And then it goes into the injector, okay, under high pressure. You have four of them. So the route, you can see the route where it is, okay. Now, um, before we talk any more about the injector, what I want to say is that diesel fuel is also a lubricant for the moving parts. So, uh, up to a point. At one time when it had sulphur in diesel, it was a good lubricant, and then they took the sulphur out. Now, what do we have? Vegetable oil, 5% vegetable oil or something. Um, anyway, basically you need a leak back. So, what this does, it leaks back the diesel to the fuel filter, self bleed, yeah, and also back to the tank, okay, where it drops the diesel back into here. And what happens, it actually comes out warm because any fluid that's been pressurized will be warm, okay, which is good because you want a certain viscosity of, of diesel to, for it to, uh, to work properly. Right, so let's talk about our injector, okay? Our injector also has a leak back. What you're looking at is your main pressure, okay? There are two pressures on the 300 TDI, we'll just talk about one of them, okay? Um, basically what happens, it pushes diesel into here. Hang on, I need the red one, red pen. Pushes diesel into here till it gets to a certain pressure which is an overcome a spring, lift a needle off the nozzle and then spray, yeah, okay. The excess which is left in the injector, it's also, also a lubricant, then goes back to the filter or maybe to, I don't know, maybe to the injection pump union here, okay. I think 300 TDI's, it's got a union here which has got one, it's got a spare one and the other. Okay, so have you got that so far? This here has a restrictor, okay, that stops pressure releasing from there, it only lets a little bit out, okay. There's not much that comes out of the leak back, but enough to, to warrant it leaking back. Right, so with our injector, like I said, um, with the 200, 300 TDIs, they've got two pressures. Uh, one's a lower pressure, which is a pre-combustion, and then you have your main pressure, which is your main squirt, okay? Now, what the squirt does on the second one is gives you your power. The pre is the one that gives you a little bit of burn to start the combustion process, all right? When you get onto later diesels, you'll find that they squirt about five times, and they're pre and post to try and clean up as much of the gas as possible. Plus you get more power if you can control that. Right, so, so what we have is basically, we have a closed system, all right? This is all closed. The only thing that is open to atmosphere at any one time is this, the tank, yeah? That is vitally important. The reason for that, as I've said already, is because you don't want the tank to, to, uh, to collapse in on itself. You try getting a Coke bottle and suck it, you'll see it collapses. If you put a hole in the end and suck it, it stays right, okay? I'm not sure about um, NAS stuff, whether it has a, uh, a ventilation system in a canister. I, I, this is beyond me. I, I'm not in America, I'm in the UK, so I don't know. Right, so do you understand that so far? If, if not, put your hand up and ask. I can't see any hands, so obviously we're somewhere there. Now, now this is uh, cigarette packet diagnostics, okay? Um, you'll probably actually tell me that I've missed something off here, which is the turbo, yeah? Um, I could put that on in a little while, but what we'll do is basically the fuel system, okay? No, tur turbos don't, don't create a non-start situation, whereas faults in, um, your fuel system will do, okay? So, um, one thing I didn't say, which is important, on your injection pump, okay, you have something called a stop solenoid. Okay, 
okay? It stops solenoid, and basically what that does is just stop the fuel from going anywhere, okay? It's a little plunger. You add um, electrical current to it, it's a magnet, it opens, and it'll let the fuel through, you can start. You take the current away, bang, it stops. Yeah. This is quite important to remember because that could be your first port of call. You stop solenoid, is either not working or it's not got a current there. Okay, so I'll take this, this out of the way because this is a pain in the backside. We don't need to know about that at the moment. Okay, so what we have is stop solenoid here. Okay. And basically you have 12 volt. It has its own ground, which is earth. Okay, if you can't crank it, then you've got no earth. <laughs> Um, if you can crank it, it's not starting. You test this solenoid. If you happen to have one that is uh, uh, tamper-proof, then I'm sorry, that might well be your immobilizer that's stopping you. Um, in the single cable one, which is more common than not, you check here to see if there's any voltage, okay? If there is voltage, you can switch it on and off to hear if it's clicking. If it clicks, it's working. Okay, so it'll be letting fuel through, yeah? I'm sorry about these diagrams, but we're, we're at school at the moment. I learned this way. Went in the classroom first, we learned about it, got it in our heads, and then went into the workshop and forgot everything. But some of it sort of remains, it just sticks in there and you think, oh, I remember what that guy says, I'll have a look at such and such and such and such. But understanding this system, is paramount because if you just look at pipes and think oh what do they do then basically you're scuppered aren't you because you, you don't know whereas if you know what all of this is doing at least then you, you're getting an idea what to look at right so um a couple of things that we could look at i've just said non-start non-start or bad starting okay um fuel if you have a, a tank that's um got a vacuum in it that doesn't usually occur until the engine's been running a while and then it'll start to run slow and then probably stop I don't know if any of you had that okay um, biggest problem is fuel supply maybe um, somewhere in the line you've got an air leak okay the lift pump is sucking diesel up to this point okay so if it's sucking air because up on the stack pipe the stack pipes metal if there's a leak there or the stack pipe has even fallen off, then um, you've got problems. Yeah? If it's blocked, it'll be the same thing. Key points here, your pipe, any of your piping probably isn't um, gunged up. All right? It's more than likely on a union. Anywhere, anywhere here. Okay? If it's gunged up on the stack pipe, you've got really big problems because there'll be loads of shit in your tank. Okay. You do have a drain in the bottom of your tank, which you can undo and you can drain it all out. You can see if there's any crap in there and you can put the clean fuel back in if you've got problems. All right, that's what that one's designed for. All right, so you have a little drain there. All right, if needs be. That's also a worry for people stealing your fuel. Yeah, if you're going to drain it, take the cap off, obviously. Right, so as I'm saying, you have your dirty fuel line. You always check for water in the system in your sedimenter if it's fitted. Okay, this should be cleaned out regularly so you don't have problems. You check for um, where your union fittings are because you can have anything stuck in there. I've, I found silicon stuck in the lift pump, which somebody had um, fitted a component to the tank and it managed to suck its way all the way through to the lift pump union okay the classic fault as well is your lift pump has failed there's a diaphragm in here that could have split okay maybe not actually you do get oil um, spew out um, if the diaphragm is weak or the valves have failed in the lift pump it will not it will suck and then push it back, so it's going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, without going forward to the filter. Okay, something to remember, there's two valves in here. Okay, you have banjo unions here, they also can collect dirt. Your filter can be blocked with crap, that should be changed regularly. Okay, 
and then the supply to your pump now that usually should be clean you should never have a problem if you've got dirt in there you've got serious issues if there's water in there you've got very serious issues because there should never ever be any any water in this or this okay nowadays what you have here on your filter is a drain okay, and I will show you you have you have a drain here okay what you do is do that and then maybe squeeze the lift pump a little bit let it drain out okay get it clean diesel you'll be surprised even with our modern technology you get places like supermarkets that buy cheap fuel they've sat in a, in a tank that's got condensation in it and that will um, give you water the other thing of course is your fuel tank collects condensation it drips into the diesel just remember that that is another one that's quite important okay that will take water into your system right so your filter to your filter blah 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 you got to your, your pump and then your injectors now if you don't have any blockages and your pump solenoid is working it should start it should crank over what the problem might be and I've seen this um, you have a leak back system on your uh, injectors okay and the leak back might be cracked and split and you don't really see it but what happens it lets the diesel drain away so when you're cranking over it, the system is not primed as I say none of this is uh, atmospheric pressure only the tank is okay so this is not like petrol carburetors at all so if there's a, if there's a split there <coughs> because your, um, your leak back pipes are, are cracked and old I'll change them and then, and then crank it so it starts and then you should be able to start it on the key in the morning okay um, other non-start situations are basically um, bad fuel yeah the injector pumps don't usually go wrong they just get worn and they go bad slowly over time same with injectors they just get worn and you'll get smoke and all sorts you might get bad starting in the mornings for instance um, and you'll get smoke and you can't get rid of the smoke um, unless unless for instance this pump is out of time the timing on the injection pump is important it should always be set when you do a timing belt make sure it's perfect I can't say I've ever seen one go out of time but I've seen one of these pulleys come loose okay and that's just put it right out and it's not started okay but generally these are reliable okay so what else can I tell you what else do you need to know um okay bad running things like smoke sluggish running again if it's sluggish it could be in your dirty diesel lines somewhere there's a fault a blockage or uh, an air leak okay usually with these where you have a suck on it um, from the lift pump from the tank you'll find that you might have a chafed pipe that's been rubbing somewhere it doesn't look like it's leaking it's not dripping out but as soon as you you, you suck the diesel it will suck air in and that will stop it from um, running properly because you're getting air in the system you need to have that completely diesel okay um, like i said the lift pump um, could be worn could be blocked somewhere or partial blockages always you always go for the filter first yeah um, check that your lift pump will actually squirt um, by hand okay um, yeah so basically that is that is it there is more to this if you want to know about combustion problems well that is more engine that's more engine